This is the Gatekeepers Podcast with Billy Grove. Billy is an innovative leader in the industry and loves teaching how to build quality fence. So sit down, grab a cold beverage, and get ready to talk about fence. Today's show is sponsored by Mr. Fence Academy. If you're looking to hit the next level in your fence company, check out Mr. Fence Academy. And now, live from the Mr. Fence Academy studios, here's your host, Billy Grove. What is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing? Hello, Fence Fam. Hello, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. Anywhere that you are listening to the podcast via the audio versions, what is going on, guys? Hope everybody has had a wonderful past seven days. I know I have um, rained its ass off today, but we're here. Um, Brand new laptop, guys. Thank you for sticking with me last week. I spilled a... I spilled my first beer all over my keyboard last week as soon as I was about to come on on the uh, my screen. So uh, that's what was the technical difficulties. That's what that was. But we're now powered by an Apple again. How did you guys like that intro video? I freaking loved it. it. took me about 45 minutes after I got the, the Apple computer set up to get it rolling again. Uh, got some new studio lights, so it's no longer dark. There's a little bit of, of a shadow behind me, but I'll fix that uh, next time. We'll have some soundproofing up, black and blue again. We'll have the Mr. Fence Academy sign right behind me as well. And we'll also be doing a second camera option. It's going to be great, y'all. It's going to be freaking great. My week was awesome, guys. Um, went to work, knocked some shit out, went to work, got held up on an extreme custom project, but it is what it is. We're still rolling. We're still doing it. We got the whole other team is in Panama city still right now working on almost a 4,000 foot, eight foot tall vinyl job. It's going to be bang up y'all. Like whenever it's done, can't wait for the pictures. And I see Mr. Chris Steele's. Is already saying, Ba, go ahead. Ba, go ahead. B8 or like BGH. Let's do it, baby. Um, so, real quick, I do have my win and my loss for the week. Um, my win is getting this computer set up and also getting my intro video set back up. So that way you guys don't have to stare at me just looking at the, at the, um, like, uh, the freaking video camcorder, web quarter, just looking all stupid. So we got a brand new intro video set up. My loss was absolutely spilling my, my first drink on my keyboard last week. Screwed the entire podcast up. Screwed my laptop up. <sighs> just all around sucked. Um, guys, my wife's interview with uh like miss marissa that got canceled she got called into work for her second job tonight so unfortunately we're not going to have the spotlight of the women of fwa segment tonight but we do have a very awesome guest on tonight mr danny wyrus i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing that right absolute vinyl absolute fence but the third man guys whenever i sat down the first night in Vegas at the burger joint that we all went to. And we talked about his processes and uh, my procedures. Evan Gardner and I were just glued to him the entire time. Like we got back to the hotel and my wife was like, baby, your head didn't move. I said, I know it didn't because it was just glued because his processes and procedures are just insane. So I thought, what a bet time, what a better time to have him on the show so i've done the chain link professional in the industry which was mr dalton patterson i'm getting on the vinyl professional in the industry without further ado here's mr danny wyrus and you can correct me if i said your last name wrong because i'm sorry sir no you said it right awesome. Wyrus. yeah Wyrus. It's, it's tough awesome. it's polish it's virvas oh okay 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 polish all right well you know i 
I didn't know that about you. So we learn um, like something new every day, right? Right. Yeah, I learn something every day. Heck yeah, man. So how was your past seven days? Because we talked on the phone and I'm pretty jealous of your past seven days. Yeah, they've been good. So been a lot of hunting. Like I shared with you, Thursday I had to go down. I volunteered to put a little fence in a lodge grass, which is south of Billings. We're out of Billings, Montana. It's about an hour south of us and I helped put up a fence for a daycare. And then afterwards I went pheasant hunting. I went pheasant hunting on Sunday and now I'm actually up in Livingston. I got one of my buddies sitting on the couch over here staring at me and my other buddy at his other place. Uh, we're up here elk hunting. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, yeah man. So um, you've been doing a lot of hunting. Are we putting a lot of food on the table as well? Yeah. Yeah. I put up a lot of stuff. Haven't killed the elk yet. Haven't even gone for deer yet. A lot of birds. And so I'm nice. saving the birds. I make a lot of soup. I'll make a green chili soup and uh, pressure can them. I pressure can a bunch of meat and a bunch of stews as well. I'm nice. not nearly the canner as Colby might be, but I do a pretty good job of canning and put my stuff <laughs> up. Yeah, man. I saw he's got a he has <laughs> got a lot of peppers to can for himself yeah. for the upcoming next year. But yeah, uh, I take my peppers and I grill them and then I sweat them and take the flesh out. And then I puree that and I add that to my broth to give it some some heat. That's awesome, man. Yeah, That's freaking awesome. Pretty good. Yeah. But yeah, man, I'm kind of the same way, except for I go or I do a lot of saltwater fishing. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I kind of put food on the table by catching it out of the uh, my Gulf of Mexico. Um, yeah. I don't get to go as much as I'd like, but, you know, we still go and we still have a fun time and even if I don't go anything, uh, you know, it's like they always say a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at work, which in my case, I freaking love my job. So it's kind of a touch, like a catch 22, but, um, I still love going fishing. I still love being out there because it also is my release. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I can see the same thing about hunting with you. Yeah. And I do some fishing too. I was able to go out of the golf before and did some red fishing but we do a lot of fly fishing up here than walleye fishing we got some pretty good blue blue ribbon trout streams up here to fly fish on but i'm liking the walleye fishing my buddy sitting over here lives in eastern montana we do a lot of walleye fishing on the river that's awesome yeah. that's awesome and i remember our talk in vegas like it was mixed between your processes and procedures and i was talking about fishing it was great yeah man. i'm hunting right yeah, yeah. They, to me business and life go hand in hand and so yeah. i set my business up to give me freedom and so yeah i get away a lot that's hell why yeah I man hell yeah well um shoot man well i'm gonna ask you the same thing i asked pretty much every single one of my guests can i have mm -hmm. a win or a loss for the week and um you can do it personal you can do it business wise whatever you want to go with yeah i'll go with the with the win um spending time with my buddies all my work's done the crews are taking care of the stuff i don't need to be there and so i'm able to go out and spend some time in the mountains i don't know if i believe in losing i believe in learning so actually i actually did a ted talk it's called the hopper gobbler and it was about a machine i invented to grasshoppers but in there i talk about losing and learning and i feel i don't really know if a loss is a loss if you learn from it and everything i've done to get here making mistakes uh redoing stuff learning the whole way you know until you quit you're always learning so i don't know if i believe in losing so what have i learned this week um i've learned that if you set things up right and you have the end game in mind and you plan accordingly, you can get the freedom that you want. I see a lot of business owners who who work their butts off and they don't get the freedom that they'd like to. They can become slaves to their jobs. And so I've set mine up to where I can get away whenever I want. My crews take care of stuff. It's all taken care of. It's pretty sweet. And the t telltale of that was two years ago, I'd had a heart attack. I was actually in a coma for five days. I didn't go to work for three months. Wow. The business still afloat, still doing its thing. Wow. It was a surprise. And so to be here is a blessing, but being taken out like it did the business is able to still be there so yeah and again here i am hunting again so i've been learning a bunch and putting things in place so i can get away when i want to man that's awesome man that's um you know that doesn't happen to everybody in the way that it happens to you know some people and it's just bro the way that you bounce back from that man that's awesome dude I'm, mm -hmm. you know. and a lot of prayer warriors in my life praying for oh, me yeah. and I was also oh, yeah. in the good hands of doctors. Yeah, everything worked out just right. It was good. 
Well, I'm glad I met you because I know that was a very awesome uh, my first night conversation, and then we also had like the rest of the five days as well. And yeah, it was a, like it was a good time. Uh, but right before we dive into that, we do have I don't know six or seven comments to get into. Uh, we already put Christy up there. Let's see, what we got Isaac Alexander says your bid helper checking in. What is going on, buddy? Hey, man, I saw your podcast with Craig this past Friday. Good show, man. Good shit. Good shit. Loved it. Uh, we got Miss Michaela Patterson says, hey, guys, how are you doing, Michaela? I watched you ladies earlier. Miss Mary kind of Cobb, JC Gurry, if you didn't know, is in the house. Hi, Billy. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, Mark, how are y'all? Hey, Mary. I hope y'all are having a, a lovely night in California. We got Mr. Destin Beckworth says, making me hungry. It's probably one of we were talking about pheasants and all that other right. stuff. What's yeah, going we're on, having, buddy? We're having Hungarian partridge and sharp tailed grouse for dinner tonight with some with some gorder beef. Oh, dude, that I have no idea what any of that is, but that all sounds amazing. It's just so good. It just, just trust me, it's so good. Hungarian partridge are the bomb. Oh, dude, that sounds amazing. Yeah, cute um, little bit about yay big. So we got JC Gurry in the house again. Like I said, uh, what is going on, guys? I cannot wait to get my signs, guys. I'm getting some fence signs. If you haven't seen, go to my page, like, follow it. Um, we're getting some fence signs, we're going to be giving some away. Also, guys, I am supposed to announce the giveaway for the Cat 5 gate, uh, uh, for this week. So next Tuesday, next Tuesday's podcast, I've got Sean and Heather on. We're going to be doing a drawing for all of you who like, share, comment, something on my page. We will put you in the drawing. You'll get a free Cat 5 gate. Go do it. They're awesome gates. And you could possibly get a free one. Like, we're not going to do a guess how many is in the bucket challenge. I'm just going to do a like or a comment, like, share uh, thing, and we're going to roll with that. You can get a free gate out of that. Uh, but, yeah, no, so we're going to keep rolling down the comments. We got Mr. Aaron Ebert. He showed up to Fence Week this past week. I had no idea that .com was in the house locally. Yeah. Um, he says, it was good to meet you in Vegas, Danny. Hope you are doing well. Hi from .com, Global Media. Guys, if you are looking for an SEO company, and no, I am not sponsored by them, but I know they do great work, go hit up .com, Mr. Sam Natello, Aaron Ebert, awesome people to work with, y'all. Awesome people. Here is my beautiful wife, Miss Amanda Elise Grove. She says, hi, gentlemen. Hey, baby, how are you? She had her segment cut off tonight because she had her guest canceled, so there's that. Miss Mary kind of Cobb says, wait, I'm half Hungarian. What are you cooking? <laughs> they're Hungarian partridge. They're also known as rock chuck, rock partridge. They're, they're, they're tasty little birds. Rock partridge. I don't know if that sounds very good. If I'm being honest with you, rock oh, partridge. Yeah. They're so oh. sweet. They're so good. Yeah. 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 Like, is it like, like soup or like, what is it? Like, no. So I took the birds. I got the legs off and the breasts. The breasts are about yay big. And so we're going to, I've had them marinate since yesterday. We'll put them on the grill. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it'll be, yeah. We got vegetables and some potatoes to go with them. It'll be good. All right. JC Gary says, are you Hungarian? I'm not. No, I'm <laughs> Polish, German, and Irish. Here we go. Montana. No, Polish, German, and Irish. So very much conflict child, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool sign. Hell yeah, man. I can't wait to get the signs. They're going to be awesome, you guys. I'm going to be able to give some away at uh, Fence Tech. And then also, guys, I'm going to be selling them on my website. So hit me up. If you want to trade, we can trade. But if not, like if you just want a fence sign, just hit me up. I'm going to be selling them on the cheap. Um, but yeah, guys, we're going to go and get in to the interview. Let me go ahead and pull up the notes real fast. Um, here we go. Oh, do, 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 do. All right. So we've already kind of established, you said earlier 
um, like in the show that you guys were based out of Montana. Can you guys, or like, can you give me a rundown on Absolute Fence, where you guys are based out of, city, state, how many crews you're running, and what your workload looks like throughout the year? So we're out of Billings, Montana. We started in 2002. We were Absolute Vinyl. In 2018, we rebranded to Absolute Fence, so we brought in other products. This year, we put in four chain link jobs. It was the first uh, year we've ever put in chain link. But uh, in 2018, we brought in wrought iron, corrugated steel, and wood fences into our fold. Um, we run two crews of three. We we had a, um, three crews of three years ago, and that worked well until it didn't. Not that we don't want more crews. It's just hard to find help right now. Right now, we've only got five installers. I make six. We're trying to find another one to bring them on. But we typically run with about 13, 14 employees total. And that's about um, six installers and one guy in the shop. Nice. nice. Yeah, we're 100% residential. So everything we do is inside cities. Uh, Billings is the biggest city in Montana at about 120,000. Our service area, we used to go up to about four hours from Billings. But now we're about two hours from Billings, but still, uh, when you think, if you understand Montana and the travel to get the places, all our peripheral cities are still small. So we only have a service area of maybe 220,000 people within two hours of Billings. The, right. the majority of our work is in Billings, probably about 80, eh, 75 to 80% of our work is right there in Billings. Nice, nice. And then what is, like, I know you guys started off as, absolute vinyl what is the percentage of vinyl to all the rest of the fences that you install so that's a hundred percent vinyl is probably 50 percent of what we do right now so we brought in a new product in 2019 it's corrugated steel it's a vinyl post and rail the corrugated steel body so that kind of fits in both realms and that actually, when it comes to all of our vinyl, vinyl post and vinyl body plus the corrugated, the, um, the corrugated is about 40 to 45 percent of our vinyl category because it has the vinyl post and rail as, as the perimeter. All right. All right. All right. Um, so we're going to we're going to segue into this real quick and I'm sure. not sponsored by them. Um, have you looked up color bond? As far as the corrugated steel? Yeah. No. No. Color Bond, Color Map, USA. It um, is exactly what you're looking for for the corrugated steel. Um, it goes together like vinyl. Uh, go look up Color well, Bond, Color Max, USA. Oh, wait. I did see those guys. I, yeah. they were, were they at the show? They were not at the show. I believe they were at Fence Tech. Okay. Yeah, I didn't, didn't see them then. Yeah, um, we like what we got going. I I'll check them out. I really like what we got going on with the corrugated steel. It's given us some crazy good options, and we've really shaken up our market here in Billings. It's been it's been it's been fun for the last six years. I'll tell you that. Watching yeah. it double every year and really really making a drive, and we're hitting the peripheral too. We did two jobs in Lewistown last week uh, that were both corrugated steel. We got one in Sydney that's four hours away, uh, but we took that because of friends and family kind of a thing. But that corrugated steel's been doing really good for us lately. Yeah, man. And like what I'm saying is like it would be corrugated steel post and then corrugated steel rails and then the infields corrugated steel as well. It's called Color Bond or Color Max. Um, here I can mm -hmm. actually I'd like I can actually pull you up a picture on the background. Yeah, let, me it looks it like. on the let me see. There it is. So oh yeah. That's yeah. what it looks like. Corrugated steel. That is Color Max USA. Um, yeah. Each one of those panels has three pieces of corrugated steel that are fit together. And um, mm. the unfortunate thing is, is there's no racking of it. Um, it's got to be right. stepped. But yeah. um, super you strong. It, you call it Color Bond? So it's Color Bond from Australia, but if you want to look it up in the USA, it's called Color Max. Color Max USA. Um, I actually had a show with the yeah. owner of Color Max USA right. uh, probably almost a year ago, 
I'll have to go look it up. I'll send you the link to it. Um, yeah, please do. Yeah, like check it out. So that way you can get um, like in touch with him. Um, mm -hmm. But let's go ahead and hit some comments again. JC Gurry says collecting signs is a thing. Yes, it absolutely is. I collect signs. If you look at my desk, my desk is littered with signs, littered with fence signs. They, co um, they collect license plates in Montana. There we go. Justin Menaces, the stain god, the stain god. First time that you've commented. Hey, buddy, what is going on, man? I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope you stained a couple decks and stop drinking that damn bang. The damn drinks are bad for you. Stop drinking that shit. It's bad for you, bro. <laughs> Michaela Patterson says, finding good quality team members is such a struggle. It really is. And it is a struggle like around the entire um, like country. Um, it's not just a you thing or a me thing. It's really just finding somebody that, who is committed to your team and to your processes and procedures. And I think you can back me on that, right? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, team members matter. You know, our deal is trying to replenish when they leave. Our average laborer stays about four years. Our foremans go our past eight, 10, 12. We had one up to 16. Hell yeah. So our quality is really, or I should say our culture is really driven to build into our men how we do what we do, train leadership in the morning. We read books. We actually study um, conflict resolution we study eq we study things in the morning with the men anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes they kick them out the door on the way they go but then they practice stuff throughout the day talking to customers and solving problems but finding good quality team members is hard because it seems like the pool has been drained and i just don't know where all the people all the laborers went but once we get them in house we keep them we don't lose them which is really good for us, but we're just having troubles finding them. I think I interviewed 40 people this year. We brought on five. The longest this year lasted two and a half days. And then we just got a guy here four weeks ago. He's been on this four weeks. So he's the newest. And it took us all year till we found this guy. And he's yeah. doing really good. He's he's doing a great job. He's really a good asset to our team. Yeah, man. And that happens, bro. I mean, like you gotta weed him out. Like here in mm -hmm. Florida, um, you know, we deal with a lot of things that a lot of the other parts of the country don't like massive heat um yeah. man i can't tell you how many new hires are just cramped up in a ball can't move their hands yeah. like they're done before lunch and it just kind of happens and that's kind of one of the things that we joke about like oh yeah the new hire says that they can take the heat <laughs> oh, with their work so hard. Like, oh. i'll work circles around you boss i've heard it so many times in playing new yeah. hire and you're like dang yeah. it I was really rooting for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. And it happens. Um, yeah. Isaac Alexander says, I would like to see photos. Oh, excuse me. Of the corrugated steel and vinyl. That sounds cool. Well, I'll find. Let me see if I can't find one. Orlando Hinge Company's in the house. What is going on, guys? If you're looking for an uphill swing hinge, and I'm not sponsored by them either, guys. Not at all. But I've used their product. The product's amazing. If you're looking for an uphill swing hinge that can swing uphill with no problems, go check out the Swan Hinge. Not sponsored, again. But, I mean, you could sponsor me if you wanted to, just to let you know. <laughs> I have no idea how it holds up to the, to the Florida Salt, um, like, to be honest with you. Um, it's got a 10-year color warranty. It's got a 30-year color warranty in Australia. They use it for metal roofs, and that's all they use over there. Um, the product's been around for a very long time. So go do your own research. Like I said, I'll drop the link for the Color Max USA guy, and y'all go hit him up. Y'all do your own due diligence. I can't answer all the questions on the product at the end of the day. Um, Josh Clark says, Oh, there we go. Oh, I like that. Oh, my God. I like that. That is freaking beautiful, dude. Thanks. Holy shit. That's beautiful. Josh Clark says, because you try to kill them. No, I don't. I just try to teach them how to actually build a fence. If they can't keep up, then they can't keep up. Come on, Josh. Come on, Josh. I already told you I was going to, like, make you a cool video. Now I'm second guessing it 
Oh, dude, that is freaking beautiful, man. I didn't roll up that hill, not too shabby. Dude. Look at that roll. That is a beautiful roll. Guys, go check out this stuff, man. This is freaking beautiful. Yeah, we've got a lot more pictures. Absolutefence.com. You can pull our website up. we got crazy amounts of pictures also on Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. Isaac says, do you have photos on your website? Yes. Yes. All right. Well. Yeah. Go, Mr. Orlando. Yeah, this one's, this one's uh, gray with dark gray. Talk. Oh, dude, that's freaking beautiful, man. I love the three rail too. The three rail sets it off. It sets yeah. it off. Said, I love that comment. I was rooting for you. Hey, man, I'm always rooting for you. Says, can't see it too good on here. As a business, you have to set up your employees for success. And guys, we're going to talk about that because Mr. Danny has an awesome process and procedure that utilizes the third man carts and i know i've done a manufacturer's episode within the past um like quarter i don't like doing them too many per quarter because i don't want to shove down like things down you guys just throw it but guys the third man implemented with danny's processes and procedures is a freaking game changer <laughs> you guys you guys are still digging and setting and you have a set team and an install team, this is the man to talk to because I was absolutely blown away the first night, like in Vegas, whenever he was telling Evan and I his processes on how they install fence. And without further ado, I think we're going to get right into it, man. So give us a little bit of insight on what i'm talking about because i know what you're talking about but nobody else does like how do you guys utilize the th these third man carts to go out and bang out as much work as you guys do yeah appreciate that so first off our system we we set six foot on centers we use premium post and premium rail and we cut our rails from 24 foot long we believe that gives us more selling power being six foot on center and we get a boast 135 mile an hour, mile an hour wind load rating and so we believe more posts in the ground can sell better against six foot we've done in our industry in our market so i believe it works really well and at the same time when we use the 24 foot rails it gives us crazy versatility so we're shooting for seven or six foot so we're not getting it exactly. So take a 69 feet stretch of fence. We're going to lay that out and get 12 69 inch sections. If it's 75 feet of fence, we're going to lay it out. We're going to get 12 75 inch sections. To us, that couple inches up to maybe six or seven inches plus or minus on that six foot, it doesn't matter. And so we'll lay out the, the fence and the guys, when we cut our rails in the shop, we'll cut them from 24 footers will have next to zero waste. Whereas if you're getting pre-done rails at 12s or 16s or at eights, especially at eights, if you wanna cut everything into um, even centers, if it happens to be less than eight foot exactly, all of those wastes get thrown away. But because we have six foot, we can go a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller, we actually have no rail waste. And so after we set our jobs, after we set the post, we wet set everything, dig, 12 inch round holes, two and a half feet deep, set our posts in there and wet concrete. We take all of our panel measurements and we break those down. And we have breakdown sheets that go into the shop. And now the shop, the fabricator guy, he's breaking down, cutting the rails. And then we load them into our carts. And that's the third man that you talked about. It was at this house right here, we call it the llama ranch. We got a couple of llamas that we use for elk hunting. But anyhow, um, he had my buddy phil had a yard cart out in his backyard i go what's that for and he goes i use it around here to haul leaves and trees and stuff around and i looked at that and i did and i was trying to figure out our employee issue because we can only do so much work and the work is grueling like he talked about the heat montana has hot and cold but it doesn't matter there's so much trips from front yard park backyard work and so you're just back and forth and back and forth and when i saw his yard carts out there i'm like I need to make carts to pack fence. And so his brother is a fabricator, just lives down the road here a little bit. And so he and I brainstormed, sketched out a couple 
what we wanted and the first couple didn't work the tires weren't strong enough the frames weren't strong enough and so we really beefed them up and we actually have um trailer axle tires on these things so they can hold up to 2000 pounds but we built them so they can hold particular material and get it into the backyard and they handle when we had them down there at vegas we did demo days and i had a couple of the carts loaded and people were moving there was a tng cart i brought there was a post cart I brought and a rail cart that I brought that were loaded up and they all thought they were heavy. As soon as they picked them up, they're all moving around the other. Like this moves like a breeze. It's how they move and what they do is pretty sweet. So for our system, after we set all the posts and we take all the panel measurements, the shop guy cuts them all. We've already eliminated that waste. Then he loads them into the cart and they get loaded into the cart in order. And so now all I have to do is look at my layout and familiar, familiarize myself with this. this is the start. This is the finish. Okay, here you go. Now I can just pull up and I can put those rails right in that hole, right in the next one, right in the next one. So a 300 foot job, one guy can rail it in about 30 minutes, top and bottom okay. rails, put the bottom rail in, lay the top one right there. We'll crimp them and we load them into the cart right in the shop. And what that does, I really believe, because when you set up like manufacturing work, like assembly line work in a shop, you're in a controlled environment and you're set up to be fast and efficient. Whereas our old way is we would cut all of our rails. They would go into a wooden bunk. The wooden bunk would get loaded onto the flatbed. Now we drove up to the job site. Now we're sorting through all those to find out where they went. Or if they were all cut, if they were all standard length or long, you'd have to take them out to the job site, then cut them and then try to put them in. We're doing that all in the shop right now. And we're really, really eliminating our waste. And so that just perfected, for us, our system, the first year that we actually put the third man cart systems into full effect was 2022, and it returned 5% to the bottom line. We cut our payroll by 5%. That's freaking awesome, man. And I remember picking them up and just being completely blown away with how light it was versus how much material like you're carrying back to the backyard. Mm -hmm. It's yes. awesome. It's awesome. Um, and not just that, but like with your process with it, cutting all those rails and having them ready to go and them guys knowing, hey, man, this cart goes here, this cart goes here, this cart goes there, and then just pulling the material off and just like walking down the line. Is, dude, that is. Yes. Yes. So on that too, not only so the carts, it's the beast, it's the white one that we load our rails in, but we also are able to put our U-channel in there. Sometimes there's a filler post where you had to put a post because there's a footing. So you have your post, you got to put a filler post behind it, whatever it might be. All of that stuff gets put in that cart. It's the finish of the job. You know, once the posts are set, there's just a couple miscellaneous things besides the rails and all that goes into that cart. And what's been great for us too, not only is all that material now accounted for, but we can move it around inside of our shop. We can just pick it up and wheel it out of the way. You don't have to have a forklift to try to damage it, possibly. It doesn't get moved 5,000 times with a forklift because there's only so much room. And anybody's yard is like, well, that's this job. But this job has to sit by itself next to this job over here. And to get to that job, you got to move this job to get to that job. And stuff gets damaged. And so right. the carts have been right. really beneficial for our inventory control and damage control, too. That's awesome, man. I freaking love it. Um, who? All right. Um, so being in Montana with your harsh winters and whatnot, give us some insights on uh, things that you do to keep busy during the slow time. Because mm -hmm. you've told me a little bit of it, and I'm yeah. very intrigued. Yeah, so the whole story, when we first started – um, we didn't realize that fencing was a nine month business that you had to pay bills on for 12 months. And so our first eight years, we didn't make money. Even one year we lost 80 grand. So how we're even here is, oh my goodness, a miracle and a blessing. But anyhow, we've learned that you need to get your cash reserves up so we can get through the winter. And so all businesses have a break even point. They got to produce X amount of money to cover the overhead. We have to produce more than that in nine months so we can be without work for three months. Do we work in the winter? Yeah, we do, but not all the time. You know, that year that I had my heart attack, uh, the men figured that they should just keep the train moving was their philosophy. And I loved the fact that they were working, but they were out there with jackhammers. And so a job that was bid for summer digging took them two and a half times to dig it in the winter. And so even though they were keeping 
money rolling. We didn't need it. We had we had the um, grain bin stock, but those jobs cost us money because it took them so long. But right. typically what we try to do in the winter is we have we have our grain bin stock. Now we can go into winter and we do a lot of maintenance. So this year is actually we have um, four set trailers. And so we'll get those all sandblasted. We'll get those all painted. We'll go through all the axles. We'll go through all the stickers and get everything, make them look brand new all over again. So we actually set up a paint booth inside our shop. We've got a 6,000 square foot shop. So we'll move some things around. We'll set up a paint booth in there and we'll, we'll get our trailers painted. And that'll be for the month of um, January, going into a little bit of February. Every year we shut down. Um, this year's the 23rd. We'll close at noon on the 23rd, Christmas, and obviously the 24th, and Christmas is on a Wednesday. But we don't come back till January 6th. So we shut down for two weeks over Christmas. Um, everybody knows that we get shut down. It's not a guarantee that they get paid, but uh, the last 15 years we've had money in the bank, if you will. So everybody gets paid for that Christmas time. So it's a two, it's a two week break for everybody. And they like that. And salaried people come back to work. We're in the shop hourly, depending on what we got, they know that it's part-time. And if there's no work in the winter, they go on unemployment or get another job and they're ready to go in the spring. Right. And we still, and even with that snag, again, our average labor or our average installer is four years. And so they love coming back. They'll figure something out in the winter. You know, if we don't have if we don't have work, A and B, the conditions two years ago when it was so cold, if I would have been up and running, I would have pumped the brakes. I would have said, we're not working. Let's get some other stuff done because all that work that got done, it cost us money to get it done. And we didn't need to turn the cash. So I would have said, sit. We don't need to do that. I like this season of rest. I like winter. It's a, it's a good time. I'm stocking up my freezer, my pantry. I'm putting all my game in the, in the uh, pantry from all the season I've been saving stock in the freezer. I'll put it in pressure canning and, and make soups and all that kind of stuff. So I like my downtime in the winter and I've kind of set the business up the way in the, in the men and the women that work there too. They like it as well. As long as you're getting a paycheck and we set it up to to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. We don't have much winter like down here. So we work, 12 months out of the year but uh mm -hmm. and and you know honestly i see that in so many industries and the thing that i see too for us you know we, it, if you don't purposely pump the brakes you're going to continue to go until the wheels come off and we just do that you know we all know it when we got our wheelbarrows or our vehicles or whatever we're working so much we can't get these other little things done and so we're forced here in montana to take that pause Yes, you got to be diligent and save your money and make sure you can. But when you do that right and you can take that pause, it actually, I think it helps throughout the season because we force, we pump the brakes throughout the season a couple times to make sure we're doing our maintenance to get things done. Because if you're not doing maintenance, you're playing defense. And I definitely don't want to play defense. You lose games that way. Right, so right. We're getting ahead of it by saying, A, we're forced to in the winter, but that's made me look and go, wait, let's put another one in the middle of the summer kind of a third of the way through then another one at two, two thirds of the way through as we use. Oh, yeah. break. So. I love it. I love it. All right, man. Well, Hey man, we're going to uh, run a commercial. We're going to be back in just a minute and uh, guys, we'll be right back. Y'all enjoy the commercial. National Metal Industries, a family-owned business for 70-plus years, has grown to be recognized for their ability to deliver on not just privacy slats for fence, but all types of fence products. National Metal Industries has all the hardware and tools to get the fence professional in and out of their job with the most ease possible. You can count on National Metal Industries for the most convenient resources in fence products. Visit nmifence.com for more information. As we like to say, you can always pick it right at National. Oh, shit. I almost made it. <laughs> I almost made it. Look, I had to pee. Sorry, y'all. Had to take a little bathroom break. All right. Well, um, guys, go hit up National Metal Industries, www.nmifence.com. Go hit up Mr. Mike Levy. Get yourself a mailer. Find out what they're all about. If you have not had one of Mr. Mike Levy's mailers, go check them out. They're freaking awesome. Game changer. Um, 
Also, thank you to all of our other sponsors, www.mrfenceacademy.com, www.jcgurry.com. Looking forward to the signs that we're getting. And once again, I'll be handing them out at Fence Tech. Also will be for sale on the website. Just go check it out. Oh, man. I almost made it. I almost made it back after the commercial. <laughs> you made it. I did. I did. You're here. All right. Um, so we're back on the topic of what you're doing during the winter to keep you guys moving. Um, do you have a set crew that goes out and installs a bunch of posts and then a install crew that just waits a long time until you're done to keep you guys busy during the like the winter? No, we no. No, we keep so we have salary guys and hourly guys. So the hourly guys will be they'll be laid off. They'll get maybe temporary hours. If we've got 20 hours worth of work, we'll give them 20 hours worth of work. If not, they'll get none. But the salary guys are there. So there if jobs come in and we just need to put a couple salary guys on it, we'll just put the salary guys on it. If we don't Word. have enough. Yeah. Word. Yeah, Word. but during the whole season, so we run two crews, but we we put our we call them nasties double buck nasties or even triple bucks we put those at the beginning of the week so one crew runs their schedule one other crew runs their schedule they'll communicate between each other and say hey we've got mrs smith coming up next monday she's 300 feet of tear out digging set what do you got going on monday nothing good you're working with us we'll put all six guys on mrs smith's job They'll tear it out. They'll dig it. And we'll typically have a crew setting, which is the foreman who's the lead. He'll stay in set. The other crew will finish the dig and then they'll bust and they'll go to another job. They're, they're able to usually get away to another job between noon and one o'clock and they'll do a smaller dig and set to finish up that day. Or they'll go do a dig and they'll put the posts in the ground and the foreman from Mrs. Smith's job will come over and set those posts over there. They'll join up and get it done. Nice. So with, the, with the six guys, there's been a lot of days where we, again, we're six foot on center. We'll do 700 feet of fence in a day. Hell yeah, man. I freaking love it. These guys move around. They get a lot of stuff done. Yeah. It's not every day. Obviously you get the bad ones, but we do. They set a lot of posts. They set a lot of I freaking love it, man. Mm -hmm. Well, Hey man, we're coming up on the end of the show. And, um, like you got any closing thoughts for us? Yeah. You asked, you made the comment about policies and procedures. And I think that really matters for everybody. If I was to give a couple of tips on that, I would say, think of predecessor mentality. So even when you set up your business, you want to think about your businesses. Could it operate without you? And you do never want to bake yourself into your business. And so as you're doing the task, it doesn't matter if it's sales, if it's ordering, if it's installation, how would that job be? How could you set it up to put somebody in there so you didn't have to do it? So write all that stuff down. Think of the person coming behind you and get that thing set up. So when we do, when we're doing our jobs to try to be as efficient as possible, we're thinking along those lines, who's going to come right behind me and can they have it the best? And so a couple of sayings that I use is clean as you go. 10 things at the end of the day is a half a day. One thing at the end of the day is 10 minutes. And so We've taught our foremans because they bounce a little bit that everything needs to be clean as you go. And that's really huge too psychologically for the customer. When they see a disarrayed um, job site, they think unprofessional. They think a really clean and neat job site, they're thinking professional. So don't paint yourself into a corner. Just think about that. Painting the floor and you get yourself into a corner. A lot of times when we're doing jobs, we'll get ourselves into a corner. Then we got to sit and wait. And so how right. can we eliminate those as well? And the other one I would say too is uh, watch out for dead ends. A lot of people will create dead ends with their job and their tasks and they have to stop and try to come back and those are wasted trips. And so we're constantly working with our guys how to be as efficient as possible and setting our systems up to set them up to win. It's, Hell yeah, man. I love that. It's fun, actually. It's a lot of fun. I love it. I love it. Well, guys, it's been an awesome show. Thank you guys for all the engagement. Um, Mr. Danny, thank you for coming on. Yeah, thanks um, for having me, man. I'm going to have I'd you love back. To come back if you want to bring me back. Oh, hell yeah, man. We're going to have you back. We're going to have you back, like, for sure. Uh, but, like, with that said, guys, go check out what, what uh, like, Danny is doing. Send him a message on Facebook. Like, if you're not friends with him, 
like go ahead and get like friends with them go check out the, the uh third man what they're doing in the vinyl world is awesome you guys uh but without further ado hey man you have a wonderful night thank you so much for coming on and i will talk to you later all right good night everybody have a wonderful night all right guys wonderful show tonight freaking love the guests awesome talk um guys we have some awesome events coming up and that is thanksgiving guys we have thanksgiving coming up we got mr sean king we got miss heather king coming on next week it's gonna be a great show we're gonna talk about everything that we're thankful for you guys make sure to tune in comment leave the love do all the things that you normally do we'll we will be here next week 7 30 p.m central standard time i have blue and black shit behind me and not white shit behind me anymore let's fucking go Ooh.